The sun only seems so much bigger because we're close to it. There are billions of stars we can't even see which are just as magnificent. It's all a matter of perspective. Welcome back to Spirit Box Radio. Listeners, welcome back to the third edition of the Spirit Box Radio Enlightenment segment, where we learn together about the arcane arts. We had a message on the forums following last week's episode from user Silly Tilly, with some notes about what I said regarding the letter we received from Amy Jeremy about the messages her father was hearing on their radio. Silly Tilly pointed out that often, the way we interpret messages from arcane beings of any kind, whether it's through a spirit box or a seance, is usually influenced by our own feelings. Here's the full message that they sent. Hi Sam, I just wanted to drop in and mention a few things about the AJ letter. Basically, when you're interpreting messages from a spirit box etc, you want to think about the kind of energy you yourself are bringing to the situation. Like, if you're really angry you've got a chance of accidentally communing with something more malevolent. But it also changes the way that you hear messages too. So if you're expecting to get a message, you're A more likely to get one and B more likely to get something that lines up with what you're expecting. Humans have big brains and we do a lot of thinking. That means a lot of arcane energy going through us all the time, and that changes all kinds of things about the ways we interact with the arcane. Thank you, Silly Tilly. That's a really good point. It's important to bear in mind that your current feelings are going to have an impact on any arcane forces around you. Madame Rhee says... uh, uh, Madame Rhee always said that humans are very clumsy with their arcane energy. It spills out everywhere and makes a right mess. It's big and disorganised. Arcanism is about refining and organising that energy and channeling it towards achieving certain goals. You're absolutely right to point out the ways your own mood can have an impact on the kinds of messages that you pick up and on the impact of- Ah! Oh no! The lamp! It just burst! I'm sorry, no, get down from there. You're going to get glass in your beans! Sorry, Revel, no. There, it's gone. You can get on the desk again now. Sorry, faithful listeners, I... I don't know. Oh, goodness. It's dark in here without the lamp. The overhead light burst a few days ago when I was down here and... I'm not sure what that noise is, but that keeps happening too. Maybe there's a problem with the wiring. Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, Oh yes, uh, emotions can have a big impact on your practice of the arcane arts, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it... It's definitely something to bear in mind. When I read Silly Tilly's message, I immediately thought of this specific passage in the little book of Big Magic. Every action has an equal opposite reaction. Whilst most physical laws do not apply literally to that regarding arcanism, arcana, the arcane arts, this third law of Isaac Newton is one exception of a slim number. Just as this law applies in the pushing and pulling of objects, so it applies to the cutting and tying of various strands of arcane energy. However, where in physical laws this law could be paraphrased as what goes up must go down, in arcanism it's best understood as all action has a price. In instances where this does not seem immediately apparent, one should be suspicious. Payment can be deferred, but never dodged entirely. See Equivalence in Casting and Summoning on page 311, and Emotional Rebate on page 404. Yeah, so you see, it feels like that Emotional Rebate thing might be of some relevance to Silly Tilly's message, which is why I thought of it, except the pages have been cut out of the book. I don't know how I've never noticed this before. Pages 310 to page 313 are missing. It goes right from 309 to 314. And then 404 all the way to 410 are just gone. There's no torn edge of the paper. The book is very old, so maybe they just fell out. At any rate, it made me curious as to whether there were other sections missing from my copy, and there were. Pages 12 to 15, which is supposed to be a description of the rune Algis and its various forms and usage, are completely gone, leaving just the introduction to Algis on 10 and 11. I did think it a bit odd the first time I read the book, actually. Later on, people are talking about algist formations and unusual applications, but I didn't remember them being discussed earlier at all. 
I chalked it up to a quirk of my particularly holy memory, but no, the pages are simply not there. I picked through the book really carefully, checking the numbers of the pages at the bottom, and there's a, the Algis section that's gone, the two mentioned above, a section about prophecies, and most peculiar of all, I never noticed that the final page of the book ends mid-sentence. The last section of the book is about some theories of ghosts, how they work, that kind of thing, and it just sets it up like it's about to start talking about how ghosts are different from other kinds of arcane beings, and then it just cuts off. I didn't think anything of it the first time I read it. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. It's an old book, a hundred years at least. The cover is very roomy around the pages, but I'd always assumed that it was because the leather had stretched. But holding it upright in my palms and looking down at the gap between the pages and the back cover, the triangle void of missing pages, when I press it somewhat shut, there's got to be at least 50 pages gone. I wonder, do any of you happen to have a copy, faithful listeners? I wouldn't even ask to borrow it. I'm just curious to know which parts of the book are actually gone. If you could leave a message on the forums for me about it, that would be great. Speaking of the forums, a couple of you on there were asking for updates about Kitty the Investigator, who has, of course, returned to the Impossible House to see if there are any changes since the office appeared under the basement studio I'm currently broadcasting from. I've not heard too much from her just yet. She's very wisely decided to go and do some reconnaissance before actually returning to the house. Even though she's not taking my comments about the house seriously, she did at least listen to the recording of that conversation I had with her that got posted on the forums. You know, the one where she was inside the house and then completely forgot she ever went inside the moment she left? Yeah. Apparently, the sounds of her own confusion was enough to convince her to be at least cautious. She does have, um... I don't mean to sound judgmental or anything, but she does sort of just end up doing things a lot of the time without having really thought them through. I know, I know, pot kettle. Anna would be throwing things at me if she was here, but no, I haven't heard from her. Anyway, the other thing people have been talking about on the forums is, well, I... And this is a bit embarrassing. You all really liked Rytidia's Bogwitch showcase from a couple of weeks ago, and you're all wondering when I'll next be having a guest on the show to make the Enlightenment segment that you were all promised rather than the Sam guesses vaguely at Arcanism and tries not to make a fool of himself live on air segment. Which is, it seems, what things have devolved into. I'm so sorry, faithful listeners. I have been trying to get hold of people to come on the show, but, well, Madame Marie's list of contacts... A lot of the people in it seem to be dead or missing. In fact, the only people in there I did manage to get a hold of were Right Hidia and Stickler and Stickler, and, well, they weren't interested in coming on unless there was something that they could clean. I suppose that is their business, you know, and there was another number in there of Oliver the Florist, would you believe? I haven't quite plucked up the courage to call it. I'm still in no fit state to go back to the shop. I'm sleeping nine, ten hours a day at the moment, and I do mean a day, too. I wake up about seven in the evening, time enough to make a pot of coffee, just as the sun starts to sink. Usually the pot is brewed perfectly in time to sit up and watch the sunset from the low wall in the back garden. Then I spend a few hours playing with Revel and reading books from down in the studio, though none of them are particularly useful. Oh, goodness me! I almost forgot because I found this weeks ago, not long after I woke up. It's an augury forecast for this week. It was wedged in the back of one of the books in the studio, one of the annoyingly Middle English ones that I can barely make sense of. But as far as I can tell, it's a contemporary account of the precursor to arcanism during the Norman Conquest. Uh, The augury forecast isn't in Middle English, don't worry. It's actually written in sparkly pink gel pen on a page which looks to have been torn from a Care Bears notebook. Still, it's been a while since I've read your augury forecast, so I'll share it with you now. A breeze in the early hours of the summer solstice ruffles the feathers of a local dove and suggests this may be a good time to try a new flavour of ice cream. If you have blue eyes, avoid walking next to train tracks this month. Just don't. It's not worth it. The sock is gone. Give up on the sock. It's not coming back. Retire its brethren.
for blackbirds in the garden mean that the weather will be unusually balmy in Yorkshire on the coming Tuesday. The wind is howling in a minor key. Do not attempt to clear out the cupboard under the stairs until it stops. It's calling to something buried deep in those boxes and bags. You must wait until it slumbers. And so concludes the augury- Ah! What- what was- You have one new message. I- what? I- I don't know what to tell you except that you have one new message. Was that you, the bang? No idea. I was too busy receiving this one new message that you have. Oh, right. Sorry, okay, um, um... You said you were going to check in with me more regularly. I know, I'm sorry, I've been... <sighs> things have been off. Well, how do you think things have been for me? I... sorry. We could have commiserated. Instead, you just get up and walk around with your legs and you don't even stop to say hi everyone in a while. I'm sorry, I'll do better. Do you want to hear this message or not? I do, but... Are you okay, recording machine? I really didn't mean to neglect you like this. I'll dust you when the show's finished, if you like. With the feather duster, not the nylon? Only the best for you, recording machine. Oh, all right. I forgive you. I'll play you your message. Oh, I am so glad that we found you. It's been so long. End of message. That person, did they leave a number? No. I know that voice. I don't know where from, but I know it. You're sure they didn't leave a number? They did not. The message was direct. Direct? They didn't phone the studio. The message was direct. But how could they leave a message on the answer machine without calling? They spoke to me directly. They spoke to you? Yes. Shocking, isn't it? People do that sometimes. You're doing it right now. What? They were here? Yes and no. When? Well, this part is troubling. Tuesday at 21.04. Tuesday? But I was here on Tuesday. I was in the room. I was sat with Revel, Cosmo and Agrol. We were watching Oran High School Host Club. Yes, I remember. The message was also left just now. I, I'm confused. What's new? <laughs> you can be really mean, you know. Sorry. Old habits die hard. How can this person have been here? Not a person. Not a... What? Wait, a ghost? Maybe. I don't know. I'm just a recording machine. Right, okay, right. Play the message again? Okay. Oh, I am so glad that we found you. It's been so long. End of message. So glad we found you. We. It could always be the royal we. I guess, but I don't know. <laughs> ah, again! What was that? I don't know, but I did hear it that time. <sighs> well, that's something at least. God, say. You know, this morning when I was making my tea before I went to bed, I... I was just holding the mug in my hand and it, and it shattered, and the liquid stayed there for a moment, hovering in the shape of the mug before it fell. It was like time slowed down, and then it was all over me. The tea, not time. I don't know, is it me? But how could it be me? I, I can't do anything. I'm useless. I've, I've no talent for arcanism, and I'm a danger to myself and others when I try it. That's what Madame Marie always says said. Magic doesn't just come from nowhere. It's just another name for arcane energy. It has to be channeled, focused. You can't do magic by accident. That has to be intent. There are magic things, magic events, magic that just sort of happens, but you cannot do magic by mistake. It's a core part of it. That's 
why you have to mutter your intentions when you cast a circle and be clear about what you're trying to achieve when you're casting spells. It matters that you're doing this purposefully. Madame Marie always says in some ways that's what magic is. Intention wrought into reality by human will alone. So let's think about it sensibly. What things can cause magic to appear to just happen? Objects imbued with arcane energy, like objects a ghost has attached itself to? Containment spells gone wrong? Poltergeists? Manifestations of wild magic approaching conscious thought? But none of that is about people. Could I be possessed? I mean, in ways it makes sense, doesn't it? I, I don't remember my past and... And I didn't kill Madame Marie, but somebody did, and it makes sense that it would have been me, but it wasn't me, and... Is this... Am I this? Am I... Am I possessed? Is there something else in me? Something bad? Which takes me over? Gods, faithful listeners... I, I can't think... I can't think... God, the light in the bathroom just blew. It wasn't even on, it just flared up and then it... it sounded like it burst, didn't it? I'm sorry, Ravel, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I know, Ravel. <laughs> I'm scared too. What am I? What's happening to me? Right, you're right. I can't just sit here. There's no way to know who was calling, who we is, what they had to do with Madame Marie's death. And, and there's no point in speculating about me, about what I... about this. I don't know what to do, though, Revel. I'm trying to keep my chin up and forge ahead, but... No. I won't believe it. When I said I didn't kill Madame Marie, Anna said I wasn't lying. She knows when people are lying. She always has done. It's her gift. Just like Kitty is strong enough to bench press 500 pounds despite being five foot nothing and never setting foot in a gym in her life. They have their gifts and I have my... <sighs> Affliction? That was what Madame Marie called it. Spiritually challenged. Oh, God's revel. What? What if I'm a monster? Yes, quite right. Well, faithful listeners, I I think I should call it a night. If any of you could provide any insight into uh, this, well, please share it on the forums. As always, if you're planning on communing with the other side, oh, you know what to do. This has been the Spirit Box Radio advice... No, this has been the Spirit Box Radio enlightenment segment. I've been Sam Enfield, I think. I bid you all a restful night. Box Radio is a podcast distributed by Hanging Sloth Studios under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 Share Alike International License. It was created by me, Pippin Major, the voice of Sam Enfield. Billy Bray is the voice of Scourge. Music is by Maybe Wednesday. If you like the show, let us know on Twitter at Hanging Sloths or stop by at our website, hangingslothstudios.com. If you'd like to help us keep making Spirit Box Radio, you can send us a tip on ko-fi.com forward slash hanging sloths or become a slothling on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash hanging sloth studios where you can get early access to episodes plus loads of other great rewards. You can buy merch in our coffee shop or on our spring merch store. Links in the description. Spirit Box Radio is recorded in front of a dead studio audience.
Get Spooky! Help!